Welcome to another episode in our educational series dealing with SonicWall appliances. Today, we'll be discussing the SonicWall SSL VPN appliances. To begin, exactly what is an SSL VPN? In short, like any VPN, the SSL VPN appliances allow secure remote access. However, unlike traditional VPNs, the SSL VPN requires nothing more than a web browser to connect. This is one of SonicWall's newest and definitely most exciting offerings at the moment. Like all of core lines, the SSL VPNs come in several models. The base unit is the SSL VPN 200. This is aimed mostly at satellite sites and small business and home users. Besides the bump up of capacity and how many people can be connected at once in the higher end models, the 2000 and the 4000, the 2000 and the 4000 also gain many other abilities, including but not limited to Citrix, RSA single sign-on, viewpoint GMS reporting, as well as both those models being rack mountable. Form factor wise, the SL VPN 200 weighs in more like a TZ150. Now that we've discussed the basics of what the goal of the SL VPN is, along with what models are available, let's actually dive into the management interface. Upon logging in, at first it'll look pretty similar to any of the SonicWall firewalls. The system and network menus are actually very similar giving the same abilities to change time, change passwords, and things of that nature. However, where the SSL VPN really starts to differentiate itself is in the portal and net extender menus. The portal menu, in short, is where you'll be customizing your virtual office. The virtual office is the area of the SSL VPN that the individual users will actually be interfacing with. This has many capabilities, from customizing the login text to customizing the logo, to creating different domains, for different groups of users, such as different departments at a university. The net extender is SonicWall's 32-bit Windows application, which may act as a thin client to hook in the SSL VPN appliance. Beyond that, you have the normal capabilities of making users different groups, assigning different privileges to each, etc., as well as logging features. To show off the virtual office a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and make a bookmark. Bookmarks just as they are in web browsers, are commonly defined resources that people will probably access on a regular basis. Individual users, if given the right, can make their own, or the administrator can make a predefined policy to begin with. Here, I'm going to be editing the default policy, so all new users in that group will actually be seeing these bookmarks. By configuring the group, I have the capability to navigate to the bookmarks menu and then add them to my desire. Here, I'm just going to add one that lets me SSH into one of our web servers. As you can see, there are many predefined protocols that you can select. Here, since I'll be managing the web server, I'll just be selecting Secure Shell version 2, or SSH version 2. After selecting Add, I can simply hit OK and the bookmark's there. Now from the user's perspective, or from the administrator just trying to see what the user would see, I can just select Virtual Office. From here, I can see exactly what the end user would, and as you can see here, we have our web server bookmark. The bookmarks vary depending on service. Several, such as RDP, rely on Internet Explorer and ActiveX. Others, such as SSH, require only Java. SonicWall is working on this to add new protocols as well as ensuring cross-platform capabilities. For example, more and more of the protocols will more likely than not be switching over to Java since Java is platform independent. Currently, 32-bit Windows is the only system supported. However, Mac and Linux Next and their plugins are in development. Internet Explorer and Firefox are both supported, but as I said, certain protocols only work with ActiveX currently, meaning you're tied to Internet Explorer. Simply by selecting the bookmark, though, we can see everything pop up, and in just a moment we'll actually have a Java-based secure shell to our web server. Now you can see that I've actually gained access to the server itself. Here I'll just enter my normal credentials.
Here I'm accepting the encryption key. And using nothing more than Java in my web browser, I have secure remote access to manage my web server. As you can see, SSL VPNs make an excellent solution. They save mass client deployments, saving both administrative time and cost, as well as offering a great deal of flexibility. However, if you do prefer a software client, simply selecting the NetExtender plugin will install the SonicWall Thin client itself. As you can see, the SonicWall SSL VPN is supposed to take the traditionally difficult process of mass VPN deployments and make it something an administrator can easily deploy over the weekend. I trust this tour has given you a little bit of insight into the exciting technology SonicWall is currently deploying. If you have any further interest, please don't hesitate to call us at 866-469-9255, including our technical sales group at Option 1.